And without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's just part A. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I, I am an American just like you are an American. I was not born an American. I was naturalized an American. I am a veteran of war, so I feel like I deserve to be an American. But as an American, we don't like to deal with the issue of faith. See, if I were to ask right now, for someone to give a hundred dollars by faith, you'll start binding stuff up in heaven and earth. You would. It's like, how dare he ask for someone to give a hundred dollars? What if I don't have it? See, we're, we're not used to faith. We're used to circumstances. We don't move by faith. We move by circumstances. See, when you have a regular job, you count on your job when you start paying bills. You start doing your little budget. Now, there's nothing wrong with the budget because I do a budget. But in your budget, you are considering that you will continue in that job and they'll continue to supply your need. You forget that your need is not coming through that job. You understand now the difference of faith and a lack of it because we lack faith. Because some of us, God may tell you, I want you to go ahead and give this amount. Well, God is all I have. I can't do that. I have my budget. And I know I'm only talking about money because we understand the issue of money. So it's not that I want your money. So automatically grab that and toss it out. Because I am not interested in your money. I'm interested in your faith to grow. What stops us from having faith is our wallets. We lack faith because we look at numbers. And we look at numbers as if numbers make us who we are. We look at people in society. They're driving this big old Mercedes. They got money. They got it made. They have faith. No, they don't. They have money. Money and faith are not the same thing. Well, what's the difference, you know? They got a car. Promotion comes from above. When God is promoting someone, guess who is doing the promotion? God is. It's not men. God is doing the promotion. God don't care if you have done some horrible thing 20 years ago that keeps popping up. God says, hey, I'm ready to promote you. You're promoted. He don't care about those little things that we're concerned of. See, I want you to notice, I, I do what I preach. I don't just get up here and I preach. I do what I preach. And when it comes to money, I don't lose any sleep about money. I don't. Not at all. A bill comes in and the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord God, I'm your son. You're going to give this to me because I need it. You'll provide all my needs according to your riches and glory. Good night. And I go to sleep. Here's the irony. When things start going really, really good, I can't sleep. But when things are going really, really bad, I get the best sleep. Say, so why is that? Because when things are going really, really, really good, I'm careful because something's going to happen in between. I'm careful to make sure I'm not going to fall because you do know that ministry falls when everything is going good. So I'm more cautious when everything is going good. When things are going bad, I can relax. I said, why? Because I have an enemy. Well, why are you relaxing? Because I'm fighting for the right side. If I was fighting for the wrong side, I wouldn't have an enemy. But as long as I'm fighting for the right side, I'm going to have an enemy. This is normal living, so I'm okay with it. I have to get to the point that I know for certain I want to please God, I have to have faith. The only way I can please God is by faith. So what do I do? I stop counting how much money I have because money will steal my faith. 
I've stopped counting it. Do you know that David started counting his forces? And do you know that a third of his nation was killed because of it? What did he do? He lacked faith. He started counting. We're this strong. We're stronger than you. We can do it all by ourselves. And God says, no, you don't need that. Wasn't he the one, same one in, in, in when, uh, is it Genesis or Exodus? Where it says some trust in horses. Some trust on chariots. But we will trust in the name of our Lord. Some trust in how big the church is. Some trust in the big choir. Some trust in the millionaires that are in the congregation. But we will trust in the name of our Lord. I have watched big ministries who haven't done what we've done. You realize that? As I sat down and someone was telling me, uh, oh, I got to check the size of your head because I saw you in the newspaper. You probably have a big head now. And they actually came and touched my head. And I'm like, listen, with my wife and I, that's our 45th time showing up on the paper. I may have had a big head the first time and the second time, probably even the third time, but by now it's getting old. It doesn't affect me because I know being on a newspaper doesn't help us any. Not at all. It doesn't give us more wealth. It doesn't help us get a bigger building. It doesn't, hey, we've had that thing for the, the orchestra up for, what, two weeks now? How many phone calls we've gotten? Not any. You know, the things that people would trust on are not working. But the things that God does works. Do you know that all God has to do for your circumstance to change is open his mouth? That's all he has to do. Well, Lord God, why you made me poor? No, you're not poor. You're rich. Well, you don't know the kind of money I have. Let the poor say he is rich. But, you know, I don't have the... Say you're rich. I'll be lying. Well, lie. Say you're rich. Well, what good is that going to do? You get up with a new attitude like you're rich, you're rich. Do you know that rich people are rich because they think they're rich? Oh, I'm really meddling now. Because you, you know the reason why you are not rich? I'm going to say it as smooth as possible. Because you think like a poor person. That's why you're not rich. You think like a poor person. I read this book, What Do Rich Parents Teach Their Kids That Poor Parents Don't? Because, see, I want my kids to think like they're rich. Because the Bible says, let the poor say they're rich. That's in the Bible. It says, say it. Say it. See, we have to do the same thing like praise and worship. Come on, say it. Come on, get in there. Come on, come on, repeat it. Come. You know, I went to Jamaica and I told them, say you're rich. And they all said, I'm rich. To start prophesying to yourself. I'm rich. Say it every day until it starts to sink in. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Well, Pastor, how is it that you get money all the time and pay all your bills? Don't you get it? I'm rich. Don't you get it? What happens to rich people? Wealth comes to them. Rich people don't go look for wealth. Wealth comes to them. Wait, I got to say it again because it's, it's a little warmy here and I see some sleepy looks. See, if my son up here was Donald Trump, I will go to Donald Trump and, Donald, I have this vis business venture that I am interested in you taking part with us. You know why they go going to Donald? Because Donald puts his name on it and it starts making money. Who went to whom? 
who went to whom? See, once I get to understand, hey, I, I live by faith. I don't live by the amount of money that I have. I live by faith. I don't live by the amount of money I have on my bank account. I live by faith. I don't live by, see, my son is in a private school. Do you know it's crazy for us to have him in a private school? Wait, if you haven't figured that out, let me make it very obvious how crazy we are. My wife and I are not working, but we have our son in private school. Well, how do you do this? I'm rich. I don't get it. You don't have to. I am rich. I still don't get it. You don't have to figure it out. I'm rich. I still don't get it. You won't get it because you can't understand. I am rich. To one day it just clicks on you and you come back and say, I'm rich too. I'm rich. Why? I am an heir and a joint heir with Christ. What is an heir? Someone who receives riches that have been given to them by someone else. I'm an heir. I'm rich. Look at someone, tell them you're rich. Okay, do that over. Say it like you really mean it. Well, what does God want you to do? Start saying that to where it becomes normal. See, right now, some of you saying it, and the whole time you're saying it, you I wish. Yeah, I, I, I wish I was rich. I just, I mean, I have my whole list of stuff that I would get if I was rich. I do too. I do too, but when I go into a poor country and I see what they need, I open up my wallet and I begin to pour into their need because I am richer than they are. I am rich. They look up to me, can you please give? I, yes, I can, because my Lord, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. So I can just begin to disseminate because he, it's flowing into me, through me, so it can go to someone else. I'm not trying to hold it back because the more I give, the more I'll receive. Again, I know I'm putting money in here, but it's not about money. Money we understand. We can understand money. If I try to make faith about, you know, raising up a child, you might lose it. But do you know you need to have faith for that too? Elijah got his driver's license right before we went to Jamaica. Here we are in Jamaica and our son is driving. We are in another nation and our son is a brand new driver. You know what I had to do in Jamaica? Father, I know it is all well because I live by faith. I live by faith. You keeping all the crazies away from him. And if he decides to be crazy while he's driving, hit him across the head. He said, I'm living by faith. If I want to please God, I have to live by faith. So how do I live by faith? How is it possible that anyone lived by faith? I found it in scripture, and I found out that every time someone lived by faith, they lived in accordance to the way they didn't want to. No one in the Bible that lived by faith wanted to live by faith. They all wanted their comfort. Jesus himself said, I don't do what I want to do, but I do what the Father does. You think he didn't want to do what he wanted to do? I'm sure he wanted to do his own thing. But he said, no, no, no. I'm living by faith. I'm living by faith. Call Moses. Moses, lead your people. I don't want to. You think Moses wanted to? Have you read in scripture how many times Moses went up to God and told God these stiff-necked people? You know what stiff neck means? You ever got a stiff neck? You know what it means? unable to change you're giving me people that are unable to change they can't even it's not even in them to change and then every once in a while god calls moses people moses people there were times that god didn't even want them moses they're your people they're not my people they're your people 
Can you see this? Moses and God both telling each other, it's, they're yours. No, they're yours. They're yours. No, they're yours. They're yours. Does it seem to you like Moses wanted to do that? He didn't want to. You looked at, at Abram before he was Abraham. Abram, I want you to leave your cushy existence. I want you to leave your house and your family. I want you to get up and go. Wait, he was in a city that to this very day is the pinnacle of civilization. Do y'all know that? Moses was surrounded by art and music and logic and philosophers. And get up and go. Where? Where I sent you. How am I going to live in a tent? What am I going to do? You're going to be a shepherd. <laughs> oh, yes, I've always wanted to be a shepherd. Come on, I'm talking to somebody already. See, living by faith, you don't do what you want to do. We want to live like we want to live and they just want to grab on to some faith when we want to get something else that we want. It ends up being that our reasoning is circular all around us. Everything has to do with me. You know, it's for me, myself, and I. You know when we grab a hold of some faith? I'm sick. Pray the prayer of faith. Wait, you haven't been practicing faith, so there is no prayer. You got to practice faith, right? It's just like anything else. You practice it and you get better at it. If you don't practice it, all of a sudden you want to grease up somebody in the name of Jesus. Like, I'm tired of those games. Aren't you tired of that? Yeah, people all of a sudden, they want the anointing so everyone can see they're anointed. They don't want the anointing so the anointing can start working in them. They want the anointing so it can start working on somebody else. It don't work that way. Tar, sorry to have to tell you. It works in me first. See, when the word of God has come up and I want you to preach this, I can't preach something to you that I haven't experienced. It becomes dead. The word killeth. But the spirit brings forth life. I have to experience things. Lord God, expand my experiences. Give me broader experiences. So I can, you can pull out of any region out of me and says, here's the word. Here's the word. He, going on eight years, my wife and I haven't had a job. Do I look like I uh, need extra sustenance? I don't, right? I know what y'all are saying. I don't know how you do it. Yes, you do. You just don't want to do it that way. You want to where it's comfortable. You want to where, hey, I got a nine to five job. I get paid this much. I can give this much. And you want to where it's like that. Just blank. Fill in the blank. Here we go. Here we go. Here. The form is already made. Just fill in the blank. While God says, I want to do away with the whole form. I want to do a new thing in you. I want to do it that when other people see you, they say that you are just different. Why is it everybody wants to be like everybody else? Why is that? Please, someone turn some air on in here. See, I get to see the people's reaction. It gets warm, and this is what we get. This is important. If we have to be a little cold to stay awake, then let's get cold to stay awake. Because right now we have some people who are believing, God's going to pay my way to go on this mission trip. God's going to pay it to, for me. To, I'm going to be on that mission trip. I'm gonna, and it's not like just saying the word and just like, whatever. No, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. You're saying it, now start to do something. That's the next part of this message. I am rich. Now start doing it. What? What am I supposed to do to be rich? What do rich people do to be rich? What do they do to be rich? 
Well, some of them cheat. We can't cheat. No, we can't do that. God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Silver and gold are mine, saith the Lord. I was praying this week, and I, you know, I've gotten a little crazier. And the, the more I'm in Christ, the crazier I get. And I started praying, and my prayer went something like this. Lord God, in heaven we have streets of gold. We have pearls, four gates hewed out of one whole pearl. We have sapphires, emeralds, diamonds, everything are within the gate. I have no need for wealth in heaven. I need it here. Oh, I lost some of y'all already. How dare you? Do you know we don't need it in heaven? Well, where do we need it at? We need it here. I don't need it in heaven. I'm not going to have a nine to five in heaven. Neither are you. We're not going to have a heavily paycheck at the end of the week. We're not going to have that. I mean, the Bible starts talking some crazy stuff like we're going to get before his presence and we're going to have a banquet. Who's going to pay for the food? I'm not paying for the food. Are you paying for, t for the food? Or are we going to have to buy a ticket each and present the ticket before we eat? No, it says we're going to have a banquet. So this I know in heaven, we get to eat. Who's paying? You see how different we think? We automatically think, hey, Ms. Don, I need you to cater a, a function. Who's paying? While in God, God's never thinking of who's paying because God just doesn't. Come on, T, come up a, an, another level. God just does it. Don't you know that God knows your needs? Don't you know? The Bible says he even knows how many hairs are in your head. But then he tries to give you some scriptures to kind of calm you down. Look of the lilies of the field, and Solomon wouldn't even dress as splendorous as them. Wait, Solomon, the one that has so much silver that it was like pebbles, he couldn't dress up as pretty as the lilies? But God allows the lilies to dress up with their fine, uh, felty-looking arrays of colors, and the next day they dry out. Who's making the lilies come up? God is. They're not working for it. You've ever gone next to a lily and said, mm, oh, it's hard. Mm, I'm trying to bring this, this flower out. I need more nutrients. Oh, the sun is beating upon my head. Cut down the lights. No, you don't hear any of that. You just get to see the beauty. See, we are strange because we'll go to Lowe's and buy the flowers while we look outside and the wildflowers are covering the grass. Who bought those? No one did. Why are they there? Because God made them. Well, God, why won't you let my tulips grow? They are growing somewhere, like if they're wild. Ooh, man, that would preach by itself. Somewhere right now, the flowers that you're willing to pay for are growing as wild. And here we are. It's back to my pocket. I need to buy this flower. I really want that flower. I know that's what it costs, but I'm willing to pay the cost. Lord God, somewhere right now, these flowers are growing crazy. Let them grow crazy in mine, too. Bring in, when, bring in the seeds. I've lost it, didn't I? Because <laughs> some of you are looking at me like, what in the world? You, you saw what Jesus did, but did you see what Elisha did? Elisha didn't want to get his foot wet. By the looks of it, Elisha didn't even have a strong relationship with God. Pass me that little cloth right there. Because he went to the brook. And he says, by the God of Elijah, command you to open up. And he walked on dry land. By what? By faith. By faith. My kids can tell you I'm nutty. 
Because I will go to a river and I will tell the river it will sustain my weight and it hasn't happened yet, but I believe that one day it will. I believe that one day I'll be like, hoo, 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 hoo. thank you, Lord God, it's happened in my lifetime. And I'll be the crazy one running across the whole river. I'll be like, I got strength now to run this thing. And oh, I can see it on the news somewhere. It was a hoax. It didn't really happen. He was walking on glass or something. <laughs> See, I, I, I dare to be a little nutty because I have realized that faith doesn't make sense. To tell you about someone in Panama who had a baby who still doesn't have the organs to have a baby, that doesn't make sense. It's an impossibility. But my God loves the impossible. Because he says, I have all power. All power. Do you know it was impossible for Mary to get pregnant with Jesus? But she got pregnant and had a baby. Why is it impossible? Because she laid with no man. She was with no man. But she carried a baby to term. And you're having a hard time believing in what? What are you trying to believe for? Is it like having a baby without having sex? Because that's happened. My Lord was born that way. Is it what? You don't want to get your feet wet? Elisha was being made fun of by some little kids because he was bald headed. And Elisha got mad. And out showed up a bear and killed the boys. <sighs> Elisha, why you let those boys die? I didn't. I just realized this faith thing works. Daniel was cast into a lion's den. It's so pretty when you read it in scripture. He was cast into a lion's den and God shut their mouths. Let me throw you in a lion's den and see how you're going to react. We're going to see your level of faith. You're going to start praying to the lion. Come on, Mr. Lion, don't eat me. I don't taste too good. <laughs> you're not going to pray to God. You'll be, Mr. Lion, I'm tough meat. You're not going to like it. <laughs> I eat a lot of hot sauce. I'm spicy. <laughs> you're not going to be like, okay, Lord God. Do your thing. You know, nowhere in there does it tell you how Daniel reacted inside the den. But you know, I think this is how Daniel reacted. It threw me in here. Come here, cat. How are you, kitty? A lion start to purr. Big old cat. Oh, y'all, come here. You big for nothing. Stop trying to play with me. <laughs> see, I don't see Daniel going in. And I'm scared. <laughs> I'm terrified. I can't believe that they did this. They threw me. I think he was calm and cool and collective because he learned to live by faith. See, when you learn to live by faith, things around you don't shake you. You shake things around you do you understand what a difference that is I mean, let's make it even crazier so you can understand this not only has God been providing for us almost eight years but God has sent us to other places to cause provision to come to them you see my attitude yes I am rich Yes, I am rich, and I'm going to be richer, and I, I'm going to be richer and richer and richer because the word of God says a good man leaves provisions to his third generation. What does that mean? I got to leave an inheritance, not just for my kids, but for my grandkids and for my great-grandkids. I have to leave them an inheritance, and that makes me a good man. How am I going to do that without a job? 
See, I say without a job, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, um, uh, um, Shannon, you remember how what it was to be without a job? Shannon got a job now, and Shannon says, I need another job. No, Shannon doesn't need another job. You need one. You know what Shannon needs? Shannon needs to be rich, and he don't need the job. Come on. See, you see how we put the cart behind the horse? We forget, hey, you know, if I, God gave me a million dollars right now, I don't need to go to work tomorrow. I'll call in my job and says, you know, I don't need my job. Thank you very much for giving me the job, but I'm going to full-time ministry. Why? Because I no longer need your provision. God has given me a provision above your provision. See, when God told me to quit my job, I told our church, God told me to quit my job, and one of our members got so mad, she stopped coming. Because she said, that man is crazy. He has kids and a wife, and he's going to quit his job. And I quit my job, and I haven't regretted quitting my job for one single day since. Why? Because now I can pray differently. Father, you told me to quit my job. This is your problem. This is not my problem. I went from the realm of providing for my own self to counting on you for provision. I'd rather count on you. So by faith, the righteous live by what? Wait, the righteous live by what? One more time, the righteous live by what? So if you're not living by faith, what does that make you? I'm glad my wife is paying attention. If the righteous live by faith, then the unrighteous are living without faith. Wait, shouldn't I be living by faith? When Mickey says, I want to go to Jamaica with y'all, yes, Lord God, let him go with, to Jamaica with us. Oh, well, my doctor is saying, I don't care what the doctor says, it's what God says. Lord God, let him go to Jamaica. Why? Because the Bible, that same verse that said, the, say that you're rich, also say, let the weak say there are. There are what? Let the weak say there are what? So you have to start proclaiming these things, don't you? Or do you think all of a sudden you're just going to feel strength come to your bones? You have to start saying the thing. You start to speak to your existence. See, God spoke things into existence, and he gave us the ability of speaking things into existence. And we start speaking all the wrong things. I don't know how I'm going to make it. You can keep that stuff to yourself. I know how I'm going to make it. I'm not coming up no rough side or no mountain. You can keep that stuff too. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Not going to stick there and be the hard way through everything. Lord God, let me go through this quickly because you know I don't like to suffer. See, I've learned how to speak differently. So when I don't feel good, yesterday I wasn't feeling too hot. Lord God, I am not feeling too hot. I'm going to sleep because when I wake up, I'm going to feel much better. Woke up and told my wife, honey, I feel so good. Goodness gracious, I don't know what happened while I was sleeping, but I feel really good. Woke up this morning, all that pollen all over the place. Father, I don't feel too good, but I can't wait till your anointing comes on me. Because when your anointing comes, then I know I'm well. See, I start speaking a little differently. Don't look at what situations you're in right now and limit your, your talk because of your situation. I was raised this way when I was brought to the United States. My dad told me this. While you live in the United States, you're a black first. What does that mean? People are going to hold you back. They're not going to allow you to do certain things because they're going to judge you by your color. And my, I didn't tell anything to my dad, but I was binding what he said. I was. I'm like, your gift will make room for you. You're black first. Your gift will make room for you. You're black first. Your gift will make room for you. You're black first. Your gift will make room for you. You're black first. Your gift will make room for you. You're black first. Your gift will make room for you. 
I don't walk around the place with I'm black first on my shoulder. I walk around the place the gifted has shown up. You will not see any place that does not receive me. Because I don't have that chip. I don't. You see that I feel comfortable around black people, white people, yellow people, green people. Brown. I feel comfortable because I don't have that color chip on me. Because I know I am gifted. And everyone wants gifted people. Started speaking differently. My dad did the best he knew because to him, he was black first. And if you see my dad come in here, he'll come with that chip. I'm black first. He go and apply for a job. They didn't give me that job because I'm black. I can go apply jobs where no other black people have ever worked before and I got the job. I got a job where I was the only person of color in the whole entire company. They tried to talk down to me, wait, uh -uh, you're not better than me. Don't talk down to me. I will not have it because I am gifted. My gift will make room. The Bible says this, saturate your mouth with good things. What does it mean to saturate? Have you ever had to make some meat and you put some condiments on it? and some lemon and some vinegar and some onions and stuff and then stuck it in the refrigerator. You bring it out a day or two later. You cook the thing and it's like, oh man, fall apart all in your mouth. You can taste everything you put on it. It's like, oh, you just marinated this real well. The Bible says marinate your mouth with good things. Come on, put it so much in there that when you, your lips begin to move, it can't help but allow someone to know all the flavor that has been put in there. Saturate your mouth with good things. So when you're looking at circumstances, here comes the enemy. He comes to beat on me, but he don't know. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for him to come and begin to beat on me. Why? Because he's going to bring out of me even greater things. See, the enemy hasn't come in to kill you. That's what he wants you to think. Do you know that? The enemy wants you to think that he's come to kill you. I read the verse. It says he come as like a roaring lion. What is that? It's as like one, not one. He's a facade. He's a fake. He's a liar. He comes in and ah! But I have these godly eyes, and I'm like, what you going to do? Gum me to death. I don't see any teeth inside your mouth. You can roar all you want to. Hey, I don't even see any claws on your paws. What you going to do? Massage me to death? I said, I, I see who you are, but I also see who I am. I see the righteousness of Christ in me. Say, hey, you want to try to bind me? I'm the strong man. Come on. I'm the strong man. You want to try it? See, when we start speaking right, then you'll notice things start attacking itself, attaching itself to you. I don't go and ask people for money. People come and give me money. Oh, I got to say that again. Because I know some of y'all, oh, I wish it was me. No, you don't. The reason why you don't is that you got to live by faith. You don't want to let go of how you live. So don't tell me, oh, you want people to start giving you money. Oh, let go of all the other stuff. Let go of everything. Oh, I don't know about that. That is a shaky foundation. Well, that's the foundation that God built on. What we think is shaky, it's stable to him. Because when God is God, I realize I am not. I am not God. You asking me to pray for you, pray that I'll be healed. I'll pray for your healing, but I can't make it happen. <gasps> I thought you were anointed, and my anointing is limited by God. God has to do it. I'm just a conduit. 
Well, I don't know. I want something sure. You're in the wrong business. You really are. Because when I live for Christ, my days are ordered by God. Not my years. I live on the preceding word for that step. I live on the preceding word for that step. I live on the preceding word for that step. See, I'm waiting for the word that proceeded out of his mouth. I'm not waiting for him to say, okay, for the next year, you're going to have all. Wait, I need to live daily by faith. When we pray, aren't we supposed to pray that God provide for us this day our daily bread? No, we have Walmart. We don't need our daily bread. We're going to go out and get our weekly bread. We're going to get enough for the whole month. We don't need to live by faith now. We can always go to Walmart. Everything is in Walmart. We've lost sight that God wants to provide for you. We've lost sight that God doesn't want you to be in a regular nine to five job. God wants you to be in a place to where his provision is known. Oh, come on. God wants you to be in the place where his provision is known. Walk in and Jeremy say, I, I need a better job. God has a better job for you. What do I have to do for the job? Wait. What? Wait. Well, I see the job. Wait. Y'all remember how long Shannon was without a job here? And one Sunday I prophesied, Shannon, you're getting a job this week? Did you think I made that happen? All I did, I, I said what I saw. But in me saying what I saw, there was a creative force. There was a creative force. See, he was going to get a job eventually anyway. Why don't we start using a creative force? God made us to be able to speak things into existence. I got a lump in my breast. I think it's cancer. Why are you speaking that? I always feared that this would happen to me. We speak things and they're things that are to kill us. And they want someone to lay hands on them and on speak what you spoke. Let's learn to speak right. Oh, I got this little lump in that. Oh, it's nothing. And I need you to start saying it's nothing. And take it around and have the whole church begin to say it's nothing in the name of Jesus. It's nothing. My wife got a lump that big on her, that big. Honey, it's nothing. I'm praying. I'm fasting and praying, Lord God. <laughs> oh, Father, I don't need this to happen. Honey, it's nothing. I'm going to go to the hospital and get it checked out, but I'm already telling you it's nothing. I have peace. I know it's nothing. Had the biopsy and all that and sit down and wait and wait and wait. Came the response. It's just a lump. It's nothing. What if she were to start speaking? Oh, I know this is what it is. I, do you know that when you speak things naturally, I'm not talking about spiritually, you have such, such things called uh, psychosis. And you can make yourself have a psychosomatic reaction. That means that if I looked at Steve and I said, okay, we're going to do an experiment, y'all. Every time y'all see Steve, tell him he don't look too good. You know, by the end of the day, Steve will be in the bed, not feeling too good. Because we have created it by speaking it. We spoke, speak things, but you're speaking the wrong things. Start speaking the right. Grab a hold of your mouth when it's, I mean, what are you doing? I'm waiting till I can speak the right things. Why? Because money is coming. And I can speak the wrong thing and cause it to stop. It's coming. Do you know what the, is the average cost of our mission trips? With medicines and all, 210,000 
dollars. How many of you would quit already? It's a rhetorical question, but I know the attitude. <laughs> it's too much money. That's more money than we spend here in a whole year. I tell you what, that's more money than we spend here in five years. But look how many mission trips we've done already. Why? I'm not thinking of money. Understand that. Whenever God says do this, I'm not thinking of how much it's going to cost because in me I already know he's going to provide it. Why I know he's going to provide it? Because he was crazy enough to tell me to do it. Don't you think when God is telling you to do something, he already made a provision? He already has. He's made the provision for you already. But what happened? Why don't we just come into the provision? Because we lack faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, how do we get faith? We're doing it right now. Do you know you're increasing in faith right now? Heaven, you know that? You're increasing in faith right now. Because the Bible says this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know how faith goes away? Faith goes away by hearing too. It comes that way and it goes away that way. It does. We have one of our members that's not here anymore because she started hearing someone saying words like this. I don't know how you can go to a church where the pastor is black. Not here no more. Why? I'm black. Here's the irony. I was black when they got here. I didn't change. Nothing's changed. Everything is the same. But someone began to speak that took away the faith. And all of a sudden, with our faith, we realize we are naked. Come on, anybody here who wants to purposely be naked? Well, I'd rather have faith where I'm covered up. Because what I am trusting is in God, not in me. I'm trusting in God. You know, for me to stand here and tell you for eight years, I haven't had a job makes the enemy so mad. Because that's called having a testimony. He can't stand it. He wish he could take that away from me. He wish, oh, you're behind on your mortgage. I am not. I'm ahead of my mortgage. You're behind on your light bill. No, I'm not. I'm ahead of my light bill. You're behind on your water bill. No, I'm not. I'm ahead of my water bill. What does that mean when I go to pay the light that says you still have a credit? Why? Because I'm going to make them even more mad. Get mad. Because you can't stop the testimony. Well, Pastor, how do I get there? How do I get to where I'm counting on God's provision? First of all, acknowledge that he has already provided. You, we like step stuff, so I'm going to tell you first step. Acknowledge he has provided already. Father, I am behind on this, but I thank God you provided for it already. It's already a done thing. I just got to walk into what you've already done. It's provided already. And start speaking it. But don't speak it as if it's a fanciful thing. It's way up here, ethereal. God has provided for this. Don't you know your circumstance? God's not moved by circumstances. He's moved by faith. Well, that's crazy. I am. I'm an alien. No, not from Pluto. I'm an alien from the heavenly realm. Said I speak in the way my father speaks. Who's your father? The one who is in heaven. Well, how he spoke. Didn't you read? It's in the very beginning. In the beginning, God said, and it was. I'm doing the currency of heaven. We're stuck on currency in earth, but don't realize currency in heaven is faith. You want to pay your bills in heaven, it costs faith. It is faith. You want to move God, exercise faith. 
Do you know that God wants you to move him? Do you know that? Why would he put that the only thing that moves God is faith unless he wants to be moved? Come on, think it through. When the enemy says destruction, Lord and God, move. Y'all remember that king that the prophet said, went up to him and said, put your ha house in order because you're going to die. And the, that king exercised faith. And that prophet won't even allow to leave the kingdom. He was still inside the building somewhere when God says, stop. <gasps> what? Turn around. Tell him I'm adding years to him. Come. Did he not move God? Oh, yeah, he should have. He accepted just that one word, but he still lived longer. And here we are. We accept our circumstances. The devil is a liar. I am the head and not the tail. I will lend and not borrow. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I go out. I am blessed when I come in. I am blessed to be a blessing. Who, who you think you're fooling? You're not messing with me. I am blessed. said, so, uh, well, I am not you. <laughs> you know what? I wasn't me 10 years ago either. I had to learn these principles. I hadn't seen people walk in them either. I heard the words that came out of the mouth, but I saw they were working a regular job. I saw when they're working on their retirement, oh, I need to put this much for retirement, I need to do this and this. I saw them doing that, but I, I heard them preach on faith, but I didn't see faith being exercised. Well, you can't please God unless you have faith, so you, they must not be pleasing him. Come on, I'm not trying to be mean and nasty. If the only thing that can please God is faith, then we need to get with the program. We need to be able to see, yes, this is water. I am not crazy. I know this is water. But in God, water doesn't exist. What do you mean water doesn't exist? It's getting in my way. Well, what do you mean it's getting in your way? I need to cross over to the other side. I don't have a boat. Well, what you want me to do? Lord God, do what you do. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. See, God wants to move in your life. Know this. He wants to. He really, really wants to. And he's not against you. He's for you. Here's the grand thing about God being for you. God is not moved by how many people are against you. God can look at the whole nation of China and say the whole nation is against you. And God said, so what? I'm for you. Lord God, there are 1.5 billion people against me. I am greater than 1.5 billion. I'm for you. Now tell me, do the math. Who can be against you? Come on, do your numbers and who is greater than I am. Come on, reason it out. The Bible says that God likes to reason with us. He says, come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. God don't mind you coming with reason. Lord God, this is what's against me. I'm greater. The enemy is against me, Lord God. I have two for every one. What are we so concerned about, really? Let's weigh it out, really. Against God, what do you lack? Say it louder. Wait, I want you to say it to where it gets inside of your Noah. You know what your Noah is? That part of you that knows. I wanted to get down to your Noah. <laughs> you say things until you just know it. You see, we are brought up in a world where we have to understand everything. And when you understand stuff, you take away faith. I don't need to understand stuff. I just need to know it. I know that God is for me. So when I get on the plane and the plane does a little shaking, I'm here to be alive and return back alive because he spoke it. I could care less shake all you want to. 
I'm getting there. If no one else survives the crash, I will be walking out. Well, why are you having that kind of attitude? What kind of attitude am I supposed to have? I am walking by faith. Well, you've never had no bullets fly over your head. Yes, I have. And even when someone holding a gun to my head, I looked squared in their eyes and says, you're an idiot. My wife can tell you I did. The gun right there in my head. I got the gun. Still makes you an idiot. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because you have no idea who I am. All of a sudden, just put the gun down. Walk away. Why? God's not finished with me yet. Why should I fear? Isn't that what David says? Whom shall I fear? <laughs> Why? Why should I be afraid? I know my time wasn't ended. Look at someone. If I, I believe that if I hadn't spoke to them that way, that would probably would have been the end of my life. I really believe that. I spoke that way because that's what came into my spirit and I spoke it. And they were afraid because how dare you have the gall to talk to me that way and I have a gun to your head. <laughs> I watched on YouTube that somebody went inside a store to rob the store and the lady began to cast out the demon out of the guy. Came in with a gun and I, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You cannot come into this place. This place belonged to the holy God. And the person ended up turning around and went away. Woman, I guarantee she has faith. I guarantee that that's what changed. It was the faith that came out of her mouth. It wasn't fear. Fear is not stronger than faith. Come on, the first, the first thing a man or woman or God get when something starts to come up is that little level of anointing that rises up in them. I said, I'm not taking this. It's not afraid. I guarantee you, when that guy put that gun to my head, I was not afraid. Two hours later, though, I was. <laughs> Two hours later, when I got a chance to process the whole thing, and I'm sitting there like, don't you know he had a gun in his hand? And you call the man an idiot twice. <laughs> Came out on the security camera or the security guards are looking at me like, man, you are just something else. Never seen this before. And he just walked out and left you alive. I'm like, I never seen that before too, but I'm terrified right now. My heart is just beating like crazy. You know, oh, thank you, Lord God. See, that was, fear wasn't what came up first. It was faith what came up first. Faith came up. And after faith did this job, then the natural fear came in. And I could have been crippled by that experience. I was working at a convenience store when this happened. I could have been crippled where I said, I quit this job. I can't do this job no more. This is too dangerous. They moved me from the good neighborhood to the bad neighborhood. Since you were able to do this, now we can move you from the good neighborhood to the bad neighborhood. They moved me to the bad neighborhood, y'all. I went to work in the bad neighborhood where people were walking in every day. Yo, what's up? What's... And man, one day someone decided they wanted to come and rob the store. Let me tell you how crazy God is. All my regular customers noticed them outside and they all pulled in the store. And they said, we saw him, so we came to protect you. You see, when you start walking by faith, even the people around you start to notice there's something unique about you. I know right now after this message, everybody's thinking, I want to I wanna walk by faith. I want to live by faith. But tomorrow is going to come by and you still need to want to walk by faith and live by faith. And the next day, it has to be a daily thing. 
daily, Lord God, what is it that you want in me? Oh, yes, it does. It has to be to where whatever you want, what, whatever you want. What else do you want me to give up? Because whatever I give up, I get more. What is it? You know how wild I am that when I pray about my wife, I say, Lord God, this is the wife that you gave me. She was yours before she was ever mine. I tell God that. She was yours before she was ever mine. Now you provide what she needs. You provide it. My kids, I'm like, Lord God, I'm just the manager of these kids. They're your children. They're your sheep of your pasture. They belong to you long before they ever came into my life. Now you give them what they need. Provide their need. See, I'm not sitting there, this is mine, and this is mine, and this is mine, and this is mine, and you are mine, and you are mine. None of you belong to me. There's nothing that belongs to me. Because everything will be left here. Yeah. Eh, well, now I'm in the casket. I guarantee you I will care less how much money I have left in the bank. I'm t I won't care or what to wear the next day. I won't even open my eyes and tell you why did you pick this outfit to bury me in. I will not care. So let me start living that way now. Lord God, these little tangible things will not become my God. Amen. They're just things. Yeah. That's all they are, things. It says you are God. When we get before God, I want you to know this. The Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. You think rich people have stuff here. They are poor compared to what God has for us. They are beggars and naked. And they think they have it all together. Since you can't even imagine the greatness that God has for us. I know I have an awesome imagination, but the word says I can't imagine it. So you think that your little problem is big to him. I want you to get to this last point. If you magnify your problem to the point to where God can't do anything about it, you have made your problem your God. You are worshiping it and bowing down before it. And saying, you are great. It's not a great problem. It's a small problem. It's an insignificant problem. It's a drop in the bucket. Wait, I'm even going to make it even smaller. It's a drop in the ocean. That's our problems. They're that big to God, a drop in the ocean. Because God is big. The earth is the Lord, the foot, the, the, the earth is the Lord, and I forgot the verse because I wanted to say the one about the footstool, and I got both of them in my head at the same time. The earth is God's footstool. Wait. What's a footstool? Something that you put your foot on. God's so big that he puts his foot on the earth. It's funny when you even stop to think about it, right? He's on his recliner on his lazy boy somewhere and come on earth, there you go. Doesn't that feel good? We make our problems so big but we are supposed to live by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. It's by faith. I don't care what stuff you did two or three or five years ago. It's by faith. I don't care what the doctor said to you. It's by faith. I don't care what your limitations are and your handicap. It's by faith. 
and start walking in it and get bold be bold be strong for the lord thy god is with thee get bold about it get to the point that you can look at someone and says you know i got this i watched this commercial about some uh insurance and something and the guy is up here and he's juggling he's juggling these uh, uh um what they call these chainsaw he's juggling a chainsaw and this guy coming no i think it was a hotel commercial that he stayed in a, some hotel and all of a sudden it made him stronger and and smarter and he goes up to the guy that's juggling chainsaw and start doing it come on pass it to me i got it come on pass it to me i got it come on you know how crazy that is, but that's how God wants us to walk by faith. No, I am not telling you to go find someone juggling chainsaws. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when you see something that looks so difficult to do, you grab by faith God prepared that situation just for me. Come on, I got this. Come on, I got this. Come on, pass it to me, I got this. Not sit there and just be overthrown. It's too big for me. I can't do this. It's too large. I want you to see the extreme that God is willing to go to. He says, I will call a child from within you and allow them to lead you. I'll get a little child to have more faith than you have. That's not supposed to be a good thing. That's supposed to be a slap in the face. I'm going to have your kids start to speak in faith and you don't even understand it yet. Talk to Ariel and see if Ariel don't talk in faith. You don't have to give Ariel nothing. Ariel starts speaking stuff. We went to see a house and my crazy kids are as crazy as me. They went to the room. This room is mine. And Elise said, oh, that's the room I wanted. It's okay. I'll have this room. Then Adrian and Jordan got a hold of it. Daddy, where's our room? Where's our room at? Where are we going to go? And uh, this will be your room. Uh, this is our room. Elijah went down to, okay, I get this area. This is mine. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. We need money first. Oh, that's coming. Did you get it? That they're already speaking faith? Not like, oh, well, I don't know if this is what God wants for us, and I don't know. No good thing would he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Come on, no, no good thing would he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Wait, one, one more time. No good thing would he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Don't you think God wants us to have good stuff? So we don't look at the number and says, ooh, it's more than we can afford. Father, you have more than sufficient. Provided, and Lord God, I don't want a mortgage. You can do it. You've done it for many before. You don't have a respecter of a person. One is not greater than the other. If you can tell Abram before he was Abraham, begin to walk and wherever your foot touches yours, all I'm asking is for this little drop in the ocean. This week, I challenge you to begin to speak and saturate your mouth with good things. This week, when you're about to say something negative about yourself, Turn it and make it positive. Oh, I don't wait. I am healed. I am healed. Uh, this is just temporary. I thank God I am well. Start walking in it. Let the weak say they are. Again, let them say they are. So when are they going to become strong? Let them say it now. It should be a now thing. It should be a now thing. See, here's our dichotomy. We don't feel it, so it's not working. God don't care about what you feel. He doesn't care. 
I'll say it again. The woman in Panama had a baby without having the organs. Do you think that she felt like she was going to have a baby? You know what happened? She was so surprised. Something started moving. Go and check it out. Oh, you're pregnant. How did you know you were pregnant? It started to move. But that means that you've been pregnant for a while. Oh, that's good. that can preach all by itself. When that baby began to move, she had already been pregnant for at least, what, three or four months? When did the miracle happen? Before she felt it. I think it just went over some people's head because we're waiting to feel something, but the miracle happens even before you feel it. You continue to walk into it. It's, hey, I'm healed. 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 The body says, I don't feel it. Body, you're lying. Because, body, you feel like a nut, and sometimes you don't. I'm healed. I'm healed. And start to walk in it. You want a better job? Don't. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask a miss to spend it on your own lust. You figure out if you want it for a good reason. I want a better job so, you know, I can give more. You liar. You're not giving now. Come on. I'm just being very, very honest. Because we tell stuff to God and we think it's true. But if you're looking at what you're doing right now, it's not true. Lord God, I need a better job. Why? I need to provide for my family. A man who does not work does not eat. Father, I have a family that needs me to provide this much. So you are my provider. You provide it for me. This is what I need. You knew my need before I needed it. You have already stretched forth your hand and provided for me. Father, allow the enemy to move out of the way and allow every door to come on open so I can come into your provision. You have not because you're not even asking. Then begin to ask. Ask.